Hey guys, welcome back to Keys of the Cosmos. Well, I'd say that there's no introduction necessary. The wait is finally over. My new mount has finally arrived. Nearly seven months that I waited for this thing, but it's finally here and I couldn't be more excited. So I wanted to just do a brief um, sort of first look, an overview of the mount. I have definitely not got to know that well at all. I've never even had it really outside. I've just, just got it the other day and I've just sort of been assembling it and putting it together, getting you know, we're scanning through the manual and trying to learn a little bit about it. But let's, I'm going to do my best to sort of, as I mentioned, just give a brief overview and I'll have a much more in-depth review coming once I've had some time using it. But first of all, this is the Ioptron CEM40EC. So when I was, you know, planning to get a proper astrophotography mount, I had, you know, I'd say a pretty small checklist, but some important things that I had to sort of check on that list. And that was, first of all, it had to be a fairly light mount um, because I do have to bring it up and down stairs generally and I would like something that I can fairly easily travel with you know even if it's just half hour or an hour to darker skies I wanted to make sure that it was a mount that wasn't too big and not too heavy but that also had decent um, capacity for holding you know a decent sized telescope so that was important um, I also wanted as I mentioned you know one that held a decent sized telescope and and so in the same sense a mount that I wasn't going to feel I had to replace in a year or two because, you know, whatever, I bought a bigger scope and this one couldn't handle it. Um, this one should definitely get me quite a few years. And also I wanted an accurate mount. I didn't want to get just an introductory one, you know, sort of a baseline mount. I wanted one that would, as I mentioned, give me quite a few years because I knew it was quality and it would have very accurate tracking, especially for someone like me, like me that's a bit lazy and oftentimes, well, never basically do I ever guide as I've talked about in some of my other videos. So it's not that I'm not going to start guiding. Of course I will, but if I don't feel like it, I know I'm still going to be able to shoot two, three, four, maybe even five minute exposures without guiding. And so that's why I bought this mount. That's what the EC refers to in the name. I'm not going to get into it in this video, but it basically re refers to built-in encoders on this um, mount that in addition to the accurate gearing, these encoders make sure that it's tracking accurately. And so that's why you're able to do, generally speaking, longer exposures than you would with most telescope mounts or at least lower end ones and not have to guide and still get really accurate tracking. So that's basically why I sprung for the EC model and uh, I don't think I'll regret it. I, I hear good things about it, so I'm excited to, to use it. So based on that checklist, this is what the mount that I purchased and here's why. I mentioned I need a light mount. Well, this one weighs only 15.8 pounds. That's really light. Um, I mean, most mounts comparable to this one are, I would say, 35 to 40 pounds and up. Some of them even 50, 55 pounds. And they're not, you know, it's able to hold massive telescopes. So the, the weight to um, weight capacity that it's able to hold is very good, the ratio on this one. This one is able to hold 40 pounds of a telescope camera all your stuff that doesn't include the counterweight so obviously you don't want to take it to the, the limit if you want to get accurate tracking but 40 pounds even if i'm we're talking 30 is more than enough for sure for something like this even my edge hd i believe that telescope weighs 18 i could be wrong 18 or 20 so you add in your camera asi air even if you want to guide you're still not anywhere near 30 pounds so for 15.8 pounds and being able to hold 40, that's amazing. And I thought, wow, that's, you know, there's very few mounts like that. You'd have to go to something like Harmonic Drive, which if you're not sure what that is, look it up, Google it. But um, those are even more expensive. And um, yeah, some of them don't even hold 40 pounds for this price range. So I didn't mind the little bit extra weight and being able to hold 40 pounds. The the tripod is in, is in addition to that 15.8 pounds, but it's super light as well, very sturdy. I think these are, I believe this is the 1.75 uh, inch model and it's uh, it's the light one. So um, super sturdy, but very light. So altogether you can easily pick this up. I can pick this up even with a telescope on it, no problem. I mean, that's not advisable, but, and the counterweight. So that definitely checked all the boxes. And with the EC, the encoders, this is supposed to be a very accurate mount. So that checked all you know, the boxes on my, on my wish list. So I really, when it, once I, you know, reviewed all those things, there really wasn't much other choice. And that's why I was willing to wait so long to get this one. So just to 
a quick overview of some of the features that I'm least aware of by reading the, the manual and that I've sort of, you know, looked into myself that I really appreciate about this mount. First of all, a couple little things, like it already has uh, built-in vibration pads. I'm gonna try and show you a picture here. Built onto the tripod, that's a small thing, but it's nice to have. You don't have one less thing to worry about and to have to buy to use with it. Another thing is you notice there's no wires. I mean, obviously there's a wire here and there's the power cord, but you don't see any wires from the deck um, or, you know, the RA, it's all built in wiring. So, I mean, that's not uncommon, but you know, introductory or lower end mounts will have wires sort of strung all over and you gotta watch they don't get snagged and I don't have to worry about that. So it's all built in and they even leave a top, a hole at the top of the saddle. I'll try to show you a picture here. You can put your own wires if you want to run whatever it is, some other accessory. Um, if you want to run it right down through the mount, you can do that. They give you that option by leaving that hole. Um, another big thing that I liked about this mount in particular is they, it comes with a built-in polar scope. So there is no manual polar scope. So for some people that might be a negative point if you like doing it yourself. This comes with I, what it's called eye polar. So it has a camera on the front. I'll try and show it in this picture here. You take the cap off, but there's no manual scope to look through it. Basically, it uses software that you download for free off our Optron, and it's it will enable you to supposedly a very quick and accurate polar alignment. The downside is you need a laptop, from what I understand. You can't use a, an app. Maybe they'll have one down the road, but for now you need a laptop. So. That is, um, you know, the downside of this, but having a, a, a free built-in, you know, polar alignment software, and from what I hear is very good camera, it gives you a very fast and accurate polar alignment. I'm definitely gonna try it out, see what it's like, and see if I choose that over using, say, the ASI Air. So, I mean, you can always use the ASI Air like I do on my Star Tracker. So, whether you wanna use the iPolar or not, the nice thing is it's there, and if you have like a small laptop that you don't mind taking out with you, you can just use that and as I mentioned the software is free so I'll definitely be doing a video on that haven't even done it yet but that was sort of a nice feature you have it there and it's free of charge it comes with it as well this this wire here is for the GPS that comes with the mount I'm not sure I'm sure a lot of mounts come with GPS but that's probably again not something an introductory mount would have and so basically as soon as you turn on the mount the GPS comes on and assuming you're not in a basement like I am now It'll find exactly where it is, and the mount knows you don't have to input all that stuff like you do on some other ones. So that's nice, that's included as well. And the other thing I like is um, there's a lot of ports on this on this mount. So I'll try to go through them really quickly here using pictures that I will take separately. So here is the I port. So that's basically for a lot of the accessories that you can buy for this. This is where the GPS plugs in. Um, I think the Wi Fi adapter, if you decide to buy that, will also use it. Um, and a lot of accessories that you can buy will go into that. There's another port on the other side here that's just for your hand controller. Okay, so here's the hand controller here. Um, there's the main sort of ports here and the power button on the back. So you have your, your um, DC 12 volt, 5 amp. You have your power button and then you have a USB 2.0. And basically that USB 2.0 is where you'll plug your ASI air into. It's where you'll plug your iPolar into. Um, uh, quite a few accessories, but mainly it'll be for the ASI air when I connect that. So that's how it connects to the scope. And then you'll be able to actually control the mount using the ASI air once that's all set up. Now there's also more ports on the, on the saddle itself, the deck saddle. So there is two 12 volt, three amp, um, power sources. So basically once you power the the mount using that first um, power power uh, outlet that I mentioned, you can power accessories using the mount itself. So that's the idea. I think that's how I'm going to do it. I'll power the mount and then I'll use this these power outlets here to power things like the ASI Air. There's also a USB 2.0 that you can use for like say a dew heater or you know whatever else that you want to use. So that's, that's kind of nice. That's um, that's sort of a, a little bit extra, I think, that I don't know if all mounts have that. So that's really nice to have and uh, definitely gonna figure out the best way to configure that. On the front here as well, there's a guiding port. If you decide to use a guide camera and all that in the software, 
And I think that's it. But the main thing is this, I think this one on the saddle is, is really nice to have. So I'll, I'll fool around with that, but I think that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to power it and then I'll have the, the mount power, you know, the ASI air and whatever else I'm running through that. Another little thing, the uh, hand controller is heated. That's a big deal. Um, I've used other ones when, man, when it's cold, the, the screen doesn't work and your hands are freezing. So in the winter time, especially in somewhere like Toronto, that's I think gonna be a nice feature to have a, a heated uh, hand controller. So that's just something small, but nice to have. In addition to that, it comes with the counterweight. This is a 10 kilogram, uh, sorry, five kilogram um, counterweight, about 11 pounds. And what else? I'm just trying to think here. The, the saddle itself comes with a Vixen and Las Mandy um, saddle. So you can put either style in. Now there is one thing I do want to mention with this that was a bit of a negative already. Nothing big, but that Vixen um, slot for on the saddle sits very low. And I've already run into a problem where when I went to install this particular telescope, you see my focus here, it's actually focuser, it's actually on top of the telescope. It's upside down. It should be the other way around. I had to twist it because when it was the, the way I normally have it, because it sits so low and I wanted to balance deck, so I needed to move that telescope up, it was hitting the saddle. So that was a bit of a problem. So what I did was I ordered, I'll try to hear a picture here. It's basically a Las Mandy base saddle that converts to Vixen. So what that'll do is it'll sit in the Las Mandy section of the saddle and it'll sort of raise it up nicely and then the telescope will sit in the Vixen adapter. So that will solve that problem. In fact, I even had a problem with my Explorer Scientific. It's a telescope I've never shown on this channel yet, but I will soon now that I have the new mount. Um, it's just a Vixen, but it has uh, two plates screwed in on the bottom. I I'll have a picture here. It's very hard to tell what I'm talking about. I don't know if that's for, so you don't damage the scope itself when you tighten a saddle like this, but even with those two plates, it's not wide. It's too wide to fit into here, which is very strange. Um, they made it very tight. It's hard, it's hard to explain without seeing in person, but it's just the design of it. So with that plate converter that I bought, that should solve that problem as well. It'll fit right on top of that plate, the saddle plate that I'm buying. And so that'll fix that problem. So that, that's one thing I'm waiting on and that'll solve that. It's, just, it's a minor thing and it wasn't that expensive, but you know, something to keep in mind. The other thing is it, it comes with a, um, a typical wall plug, which is I think not the, all that normal for mounts. Normally they come with a power cord like this, cigarette lighter style. So I actually bought this on eBay, this was super cheap. And the idea is I wanna power the mount. Instead of using a wall plug and I have to bring out one of my other power sources, I can just use my Celestron power tank. This is the big one. This is where I'll plug this into. This of course goes into the back of the mount. And then as I mentioned, once this is powered, I can power everything else off this power ports on the saddle. So. I bought a, a cord and I bought um, the saddle adapter in addition. And I also bought, these are cheap as well, just a, a two kilogram counterweight, just for, you know, like my Red Cat, if I put that on here, and maybe to combine with for my bigger telescope. So I have just a little bit more weight and, you know, you, you don't have to be quite as fussy. Another thing that's nice, it comes with a nice little case um, that, that this fits in. I think that's pretty typical for you know, this level of mount, they all come in a case. So that's nice though, it's, it's not too heavy. It comes with nice foam and it fits perfectly in there, all the, all the accessories as well. So that's great for travel and even just storing if you're not gonna be using it for some time. So yeah, that's just sort of a brief overview. Uh, so far, it's I'm really impressed with it. The, the setup was quite easy. Um, there was a couple things that were a little bit tricky. Basically it's set up for lower latitudes. So you have to adjust that. You have to move some of these bolts and um, the hardest thing was moving the, the bolt at the front here, which basically helps raise it up to bring it up to 43 degrees, which is the latitude I am here in Toronto. So that was a bit tricky, but it took me about 10 minutes, nothing major. The rest is pretty typical, just attaching to the tripod with the peg and all that. It comes with a Allen key that uses a magnet and just, I don't know if you can see it here, it just stays stored right in the mount. So that's nice and it has a magnet, so you hopefully you won't lose that. But yeah, it seems like it's pretty, you know, pretty pretty, pretty straightforward. It has a nice uh, accessories tray on the legs here, as most mounts do, and somewhere to put the hand controller. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, 
otherwise it's it's a typical mount and of course here's your gear, your locks to unlock the the axis the ra and the deck the other ones on the other side and it's very smooth like when you feel it there's no stickiness it's just you know it's it's it just is very very smooth and just glides on both axes so that i'm very impressed with and i've been very happy with it so far so the other thing i'll do is i'll just sort of try and give you a quick uh demonstration of the mount as it slews so you can kind of get an idea of noise so let's go to solar system i don't know i've never done this before let's go to the sun and see what happens So pretty quiet, yeah. I'm really happy with that too. It's it's very quiet, and even when it's running, you know, you barely hear. It. There's a little bit of a hum, but it's very quiet. So really excited to use this more. That's that's basically, you know, it, guys. That's it for this video. I, I just wanted to do a sort of a first look. It's it's got a lot more features that I'll get into once I learn them and learn how to use them and, and read through the manual a little bit more. But I'm really excited about this. Um, I think I made the right choice and you know even though it was a long wait I think it'll be worth it so this is gonna open the door for a lot more videos not only as I mentioned a more in-depth video on the mount itself uh, on the eye polar but also of course some of my bigger telescopes that I really haven't been able to use because I haven't had the proper mount for it so with my mount now the more I use it the more I can get the hang of it and I can get those bigger telescopes on it for now I'll probably continue use my star trucker I mean I'll be using it anyway as I mentioned my goal was always to have two rigs going uh, most nights, but for now I'll probably have the, the star tracker still doing the main imaging and then while that's running I can have this outside as well and just sort of get the hang of it. I'll put the DSLR on it and maybe one of my bigger telescopes and just try and get a hang of it. And, and then, then once I do I'll start collecting data, start imaging with it and that way I'll be able to pump out more, more pictures and more videos for you guys. So lots to look forward to, super excited. Let me know what you think. Do you have this mount? Is it one that you're thinking about? Uh, let me know anything in particular you want to know about it. I'll be happy to share that with you. And let me know what mount you guys are using. Um, you know, there's so many options out there. But if you're looking for lightweight, uh, easy uh, portability, and a super accurate mount, this is, I think, a really good candidate. And it's one that you should take a look at. So again, it's the Iop Ioptron CEM40 EC. Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next one. Take care.